Hey there, and welcome to one of our TLDR US videos. If you didn't know, we've just started a new channel to discuss US politics. And I think it would also be interesting to a lot of you who are outside of the US too. This video was first posted on the TLDR US channel a couple of days ago, but I thought we might as well share it here too. Our first few US videos will make sure to post on both channels, but soon it will be exclusively over on TLDR US. To make sure you don't miss a thing, be sure to subscribe to our US channel and hit the bell icon. There's a link to all of that down below. Thank you so much for continuing to support TLDR News. So for our first TLDR US video, we thought we'd tackle something safe and uncontroversial. Something that brings people together and everyone can agree on. So let's talk about the 2020 presidential election and why Donald Trump will likely end up securing a second term. Regardless of your personal opinion, Donald Trump is clearly a very unpopular president. You can see that for the vast majority of his presidency, there's been more people disapproving of him than on his side. In fact, his rate of disapproval overtook approvals after only 14 days in office. This obviously doesn't look good, and it begins to look worse for Trump when you compare him to other recent presidents. Looking at all the president's approval ratings since polls began, you can see that Trump has the lowest average approval rating of any modern president. Now, we could spend all day discussing the reasons behind this, and whether or not he's been a good president. In fact, we might actually do that in another video. But today, let's discuss his re-election prospects. Surely, a president as unpopular as Trump isn't going to be elected for a second term, right? Well, maybe it's not that simple. And in this video, we're going to outline five reasons why it's likely that Trump will end up securing a second term in office. A country's economy is an important part of any nation, and people really do take economics into account when casting their vote. That being said, most people don't have an intricate understanding of economics and of economic policy, so a lot of this is just feelings based. Do I feel richer? Am I being paid more? Do I feel more confident in my future? That means a lot of the conversations around the economy are actually questions of messaging. How the administration talks about the economy. You might want to say a lot of bad things about Trump, but there's no taking away from the fact that he's a bit of a master of messaging. His confidence in the economy, or at least the confidence he tries to project, is clear. And a lot of people will be hugely encouraged by this. Others might describe it as twisting the facts, bluster, or just pure lies. But there's a lot of his base supporters who are super enthusiastic about the state of the US economy right now, and many of them attribute that to Trump. And they do have some reason to feel that way. The US economy on the whole is performing well. If you look at the economic growth numbers, you can see that the state of the economy is strong and has continued its post-recession bounce back. There's a lot of issues with purely looking at growth statistics, and it really overlooks key voter issues like income inequality and the real world value of your paycheck. That being said though, the prediction models which focus on economic factors predicted the 2016 election successfully. And at this stage, they're predicting that Trump will win in 2020 and by a pretty comfortable margin. One of the reasons that Trump won in the first place is that he's actually really good at campaigning. He can get a lot of people rallied around his causes, he can build momentum, he can get control of the media cycle. It's because of these skills that he clearly outclassed the Clinton campaign back in 2016, and in many ways, he ran a superior campaign. This obviously gives him the upper hand in the 2020 race. He's got the experience which the Democratic candidates lack, and he can try and replicate the success of his 2016 campaign this time round. What really sets him apart though, is that he never actually stops campaigning. Even when in office, he's continued to use his campaign slogans, continue to hold rallies, and continue to act as if he's campaigning against the Democrats rather than governing the country. A lot of his supporters might like this approach, but more than that, it sets him up perfectly to continue his 24-7 campaigning straight into the next election. Beyond just the experience of campaigning in 2016, and even beyond the fact that his campaign never really seemed to stop, Trump has another big advantage this time round. He's the president. That might seem really obvious and not worth pointing out, but it does come with some huge advantages. Let's look at some past presidents quickly. Out of the most recent 10 who ran for re-election, the incumbent president won seven times. The incumbent presidents benefit from name recognition, campaign experience, and from an existing donor structure, all areas where Trump excels. 
In fact, this incumbency advantage is doubly beneficial for Trump, someone who has never been traditionally presidential. During the 2016 campaign, a lot of people criticised him for not being presidential enough and not behaving like a president. During his presidency, he's continued to receive very similar criticisms, but this time round, he has the very real advantage of him actually being president. And every time he sits behind the Resolute desk, or every time he walks up the stairs to Air Force One, he is the president. Sure, he might not act in a traditionally presidential manner, but he's been able to really erode this criticism over his time in office. Trump had a lot of support from the religious right in 2016, and he's probably done enough to keep them on his side. While some of his policies and actions might seem counter to the traditional religious ideals, he is working hard to fulfil one of the religious right's core goals, overturning Roe v Wade, and with it, overturning the right to an abortion. By nominating two anti-abortion judges to the Supreme Court in Gorsuch and Kavanaugh, Trump is well on the way to helping them fulfil their goal. Trump has even promised to appoint more conservative anti-abortion judges if he gets the opportunity, something which will make the religious right much more on his side. Trump has likely also done enough to keep the traditional, more moderate Republicans happy too. He might continue to be too vulgar or too brash for their tastes, but to many Republicans, he's still better than the alternatives. While many of these more moderate voters might not like his Twitter storms or his flirting with dictators, they certainly do like his tax cuts and the way he's seen to fight the perceived socialist wave in the Democratic Party. And because of this, a lot of voters will continue to see Trump as the preferable option. He might not be the ideal president for them, but he's better than the democratic option. So they might happily take the tax cuts and choose to ignore the parts they don't like quite so much. That being said, he has struggled to keep all of the promises he made to his core base, the people who his nationalist and populist approach really appealed to. His two core promises in this area haven't exactly been kept, something which we'll tackle in another video. His core policy, the wall, is far from complete. In fact, no new wall has been erected where there wasn't already a fence or wall of some kind before. Sure, he stood next to some prototype walls in a cleverly designed photo op, but no real progress has been made to secure the southern border. Draining the swamp has arguably been even less successful, with Trump electing more corporatist officials than ever. Some of his base might be happy with the progress being made, thinking that Trump has done as much as possible considering the corrupt Congress and deep state working against him. But there's a definite section who feel disappointed in what's happened so far. The thing is though, who else can these disappointed people vote for? With their views, they're unlikely to vote for Democrats. So unless they're going to abstain from this vote altogether, their best shot is to support Trump and hope he delivers a little more in his second term. Even if Trump isn't popular enough to win a majority of the votes, that doesn't mean he won't win the race to the White House. And that's because of the Electoral College. If you want us to explain the Electoral College in more detail in another video, like this video and comment down below to let us know. But for now, here's how the Electoral College benefits Trump. The Electoral College system means that even if a candidate doesn't win the majority of votes cast, they can still win the presidency. In fact, cast your mind back to 2016, and that's exactly what happened. Trump won about 46% of the popular vote, but due to the workings of the Electoral College, he still secured the presidency. So why is the Electoral College such good news for Trump? Well, Trump really appeals to non-college educated white voters. And these voters are exactly the ones who are more concentrated in the upper Midwest. And these are the states which also tend to have more of the electoral votes. And this means he doesn't have to fight as hard to win each of the Electoral College seats. His base naturally lives in places which gives their individual votes more power. In all but two states, these Electoral College votes are attributed on a winner-takes-all basis. So if a state had 38 Electoral College votes, they all get given to the winner, even if the public vote was decided by one or two votes. This means that winning swing states gives a candidate a huge boost, even if they didn't win the state that convincingly. This is again good news for Trump, who is currently polling well in four out of the five Midwestern swing states. Trump might not be popular across the nation, he might not get the majority of the votes, but that doesn't mean that he won't stay in office for an additional four years. So those are the five reasons we think that Trump might end up getting a second term. The economy, his 24-7 campaigning, the fact he's the incumbent, his base, and the electoral college. Do you agree with our analysis? 
We're planning on putting out a video where we pose the counter-argument, saying that Trump will likely be replaced in 2020, and we want to know what you think. What arguments do you have? Why do you think that Trump's days are numbered? We'll make sure we read the comments and integrate them into our argument for this video. Don't worry, you'll get credit for that too. So make sure you comment your arguments below to let us know what you think. If you enjoyed this video and want to make sure you don't miss any of our US content, then be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon. You can also find TLDR US across other social networks simply by searching for TLDR News US.